So today I'll be showing you some tips and tricks in Death Stranding to make you the best delivery man you can be. And on every tips video I make, I always tell you guys to leave your tips down in the comments below, but I think that's even more true here because this game has a lot of stuff in it and it doesn't really explain a whole lot, so there's no way I'll get to everything and I'm sure you guys got some tips that even I don't know. First off, some tips for mules and getting through mule camps. Always use a watchtower to look around mule territory before heading in if possible. If you're connected online, there most likely is a watchtower around somewhere from another player. If you can't use one, press R1 and scan the area, and you'll scan your nearby area and it should mark the cargo that the mules are carrying, so you can kind of get an idea of where they are. The reason that you get scanned when you cross over to mule turf is because these little pylons sticking out of the ground sense you. These send out a wave to sense Sam, so that the other mules can ping your cargo and if they do, they'll come chase you down, so if you get scanned and you're cargo is marked where you got scanned at, you should run in a different direction from them or hide and find some cover. In episode 3, you'll unlock an ability that allows you to counter scan by pressing R1, cancelling out their scan. You should hear a robotic type sound which means the scan is coming. Right after the wave of orange light hits you, press R1 to scan. It's a little tricky sometimes because it depends all on the timing, but if you do it right, you should notice that your cargo isn't pinged on the ground. Usually I find the perfect timing again right when that wave hits me, I press R1. If you're on foot and a truck is chasing you, try to stick to the rocky terrain or any type of terrain that isn't flat. If you see a patch of rocks, run over there. The trucks tend to spaz out and not know what to do when you go through some of those rocks. And also gaps slow them down a lot if you lay down a ladder across a gap. If you want to play it smart, you should plan out a route ahead of time when going through mule territory, lay down some ladders across an escape route just to make it harder for them to chase you. Also change direction frequently, whether you're driving or running, so that that they can't hit you with their spears and shock you. They tend to throw them where they're anticipating for you to be, so if you change directions every couple seconds or just run at a slightly different angle, they usually can't hit you. If they do shock you and you're in your vehicle, it'll shock the vehicle, not allowing you to drive it for a few seconds, and it'll kick you out. By the way, the bullet gun and just the standard strand are great weapons for combat. You can use the strand for silent takedowns or use it to parry melee attacks if you time it right. The bullet gun is just a simple to use weapon where you don't have to be that accurate. If you're delivering a package that you have to keep flat, such as a pizza, since I believe the pizza deliveries are the only ones that I've seen where you have to keep it flat, you need to take everything out of your bag and place cargo in so that there's a flat top for the pizza to lay on. Sadly, you can't really use auto arrange when you need to keep a package flat because it orders your cargo to where you're just more balanced and doesn't really take in the fact that that package needs to remain flat. What I usually do is place a medium sized container first and then six small ones and then put the pizza on top. It should lay flat on there. And by the way, you can see the container sizes with the letter S for small, M for medium, and so on. You should pay attention to those letters and the likes that you'll receive before picking up that lost cargo. I wouldn't spend too much time on lost cargo unless it's a small container and I'm heading in that direction or it gives a lot of likes and I'm heading in that direction. Or if it's small and I just want to entrust it to someone else. It'll also usually say that location where you have to deliver it before you even pick it up. By the way, a shortcut to unloading your cargo is to just hold triangle. This comes in handy in a lot of different situations where you need to quickly drop everything, like when some mules are attacking you or you're just reordering for your pizza. If you're having trouble with balance, you're probably not doing these two things. Auto arrange cargo in the menus by pressing triangle and then hold X to confirm. This automatically sets your cargo to the best possible balance. If you're carrying a decent amount, hold L2 and R2 the whole time or at least whenever you're changing direction or hitting rougher terrain or going downhill. You can really just hold directly forward on the left stick and remain perfectly stable and then just hold L2 and R2 to grip whenever you're changing direction. The only downside to auto arrange is that you need to check and make sure it didn't strap some important cargo that needs to remain undamaged to your legs or shoulders. This is where cargo is more easily damaged. If you have important cargo for a mission, you should carry it at the bottom of your bag. That way it's in your backpack strap and takes less damage. You shouldn't need to worry about that a whole lot though, unless you're planning on getting into some combat or think you might fall quite a bit. Also, this cargo seems to be the last to fall out of your bag if you fall. You can manual save by pressing options and hit left on the d-pad and go to system. But you can also save by holding circle to sit down and rest. This is a good way to replenish some of your stamina or take a nap. So this is up to you because you only get so much chiral network space in each area, which can be viewed up here. You'll unlock more as you progress by the way. And each thing you place takes up a certain amount, but a good idea is to load up on some PCC level 1s and place generators whenever you need them, but place them on a route to other facilities that way they'll be useful to you later on, as you usually have to pass through these same areas multiple times. Later on, I would suggest doing a similar thing, 
except stacking up some PCC level 2s and create a network of zip lines once you unlock those, because those will save you loads of time getting from facility to facility. I would suggest that you start creating this network of zip lines as soon as you unlock them. They do take up a decent sized chunk of network, but they're definitely worth it. Especially if you're planning on getting 100% in this game for the Platinum, which you have to get 5 stars at all 39 facilities. The level 1 zip lines can only be placed at a maximum range of 300 meters from each other, so I would suggest getting all 300 of those meters. Try to separate these 300 meters if you can, but if you can't, aim for like 250 sometimes. And when you're setting up that second zip line, it'll tell you how many meters away you are from the other one. It shows it right on the little line up there. If you are more than 300 meters away, you're not going to be able to connect to the other zip line. And when you're planning the route for these, you can open up your map and stick a ping somewhere, like where you think 300 meters away from your zip line is, and you can see how far away you are from that ping. That way you can get like a rough distance of where you need to go for the next one. If you don't have those yet, make sure you're using a vehicle a lot of the time. I like to use the reverse trike ranged, since it gets more battery life and also goes super fast if you press L3. By the way, most if not all vehicles boost by clicking L3 on the left analog stick. All of these little cutscenes where you're placing down cargo or going to sleep or any of the things that you repeatedly see and do non-stop, pause or press options and hit skip. While climbing down a ladder, you can hold square to slide down. You should go sleep in your private room every so often, or at least every few deliveries to refill all of your gauges, most importantly stamina. You'll also fill up on your canteen of monster energy, which replenishes stamina and you can drink a monster from the room for a 10% stamina boost. You can drink three of these for a 25% stamina boost, and you can do it pretty quickly if you just skip the scene each time like we already talked about. Hot springs hidden throughout the map also give some nice bonuses. So whenever you see one of those, you should take a dip in there. By the way, one of the gauges down there that shows the boot icon will display the health of the boots that you're wearing. Always carry one, if not two, pairs of boots on your boot clip. You don't want to be running some containers on a delivery and your boots get destroyed with no extra pairs around. Later on in episode 3, you'll acquire power skeletons, which help with multiple things, like balance, carrying heavier cargo, and getting through terrain easier. It just makes everything better. They use a lot more battery while sprinting, and drains basically nothing when you're just holding the stick forward without clicking L3. I honestly don't think it drains anything, at least in the sun and cloudy weather since they're solar powered. Facilities, roads, and bridges don't drain your battery since they are battery powered. I would recommend improving your relationship with the engineer as soon as possible, who is the one that gave you the power skeleton blueprint. That way you can get the improved schematics for it. Getting his relationship to 3 stars will get you the level 2 power skeleton and then getting his relationship to level 4 will give you the level 3 skeleton. To do this, you can bring him lost cargo, which I wouldn't suggest focusing on, or you can complete standard orders for him. I would say wait until you complete order number 24 so you can unlock premium orders. Premium deliveries allow you to make a standard order harder, but it also increases the likes you earn, which is what improves your relationship. I'd also recommend changing your difficulty to hard while doing premium deliveries so you can get the Legend of Legends rating. Difficulty has very little to do with anything besides combat in this game, Game, and combat only takes up like 10% of it. There's no reward for playing on hard except for getting the Legend of Legends in your evaluation, which leads to the growth of a Legend Trophy if you're trying to platinum the game. Leveled up power skeletons also get better use of your battery. Couple that with the extra battery that you can stick onto your backpack by going to your private room and looking below BB and your outfit, and you can stick that on along with some other extras which will benefit you. I believe you unlock this backpack customization towards the end of episode 3. Hats reduce stamina consumption and you can get your bridges hat easily from your private room each time. Once the container of whatever you're delivering is destroyed, the object inside will start taking a lot more damage. This is where container repair spray comes into play. To use container repair spray, you can either offload the container you want to repair and take out the spray by holding right on the d-pad, and when you have it out just aim and spray with L2 and R2, or you can take out the spray and aim it backwards. This is pretty useful if you're on the run and just want to spray everything down real quick, especially if the time fall rain is falling on you right now. It's pretty useful to just carry one of these around and spray it whenever your cargo is taking damage. If you're spraying this while it's snowing or raining, or basically time fall, the improvements won't be as good while spraying it, but it'll give the container some extra resistance. So speaking of time fall, some tips for getting through BT territory. Once you get close to BTs, Sam will sense them, and it'll go into some slow motion kind of dramatic sound effect. Once you get even closer to them, 
BB will start alerting you to where a BT is by using his Odra deck. It'll point you in the direction that a BT is, so you usually don't want to go in that direction, obviously. This is usually when I crouch down and start crawling everywhere. If it turns orange and starts spinning like a helicopter prop, you need to hold R1 to hold your breath and crawl out of there. You don't want to crawl at full speed a lot of the time. If you're right next to one especially, just hold your left stick forward a little bit. And if you run out of breath, don't panic. Just keep crawling and hold it again ASAP if they're still near you. If you're having a hard time seeing the Odra deck, because your cargo is in the way, press R3 to change your view. I usually always travel through BT territory by viewing Sam on the right side. Otherwise, you just can't see where BB is alerting to BTs. You can also usually scan and stand still to see where the nearby BTs are floating. If you want to take them out with a hematic grenade, you should do so by throwing it on the floor underneath them. You can throw it directly at them, but there's a good chance you can miss, especially if they're moving around a lot. This is even more true when you want to throw it at one that you're not seeing yet and they're still invisible. Also, throw it at the floor when they're trying to drag you under and it'll help you get out of that situation a ton. And then lastly, nothing too important, but you can press options and hit left on the d-pad to get to the pause menu and go down to bridge links to see everyone you're linked to and connected with online. These are all of the people whose structures and signs you can interact with and you can even see how many likes you've received from someone and how many likes you've given them. If you press your name at the top, you can see all of your stats like your difficulty, BB bonding level, your star and levels, and how many Legend of Legends ratings you have. And if you hit R1 and go over to these structures, you can see how many likes you have on things you've placed. Maybe that'll give you an idea on what you should place next to try to get some likes. That's pretty much it. Again, leave your tips down in the comments section below and subscribe for more Death Stranding videos. See ya.